Thanks for tuning in to the Prairie Fire men's basketball game against Lake Forest College during this alumni appreciation weekend. What a first half of basketball it has been. Before we get back to the action, I am incredibly excited to welcome on air former men's basketball players and brothers, Darren Smith, class of 1993, and Michael Smith, class of 1996. Darren and Michael, thank you both so much for joining us this afternoon. It's such a pleasure to have you both on. Welcome. Thanks, crew. If you, if you don't mind sharing with us, what is your post Knox basketball career had in store for you? How has it led you to where you are now? Darren, I'll let you kick us off and then we'll pass it to you, Michael. Great, thanks, crew. Um, well, my, uh, my post Knox career actually started pretty humbly. Um, my first job was working in a factory and driving a forklift, so not very glamorous. Um, fortunately, I was in a pretty interesting industry in the, in the food industry. And while I didn't necessarily like that job, I, I had the opportunity to learn a lot and actually got a lot of opportunities as a result of, of really just understanding the industry and, and the environment that I was in. So after a number of years, I took a bit of a leap of faith and made a transition, moved from the Chicagoland area to the East Coast and actually started working for some brands in the food industry. So going to a grocery store and items on the shelf, you know, some of those companies are, are ones that I work for and, and continue to work my way up and, and started uh, running operations for these different companies and have been very fortunate to work with some, some fun brands and had some interesting acquisitions along the way that is, is part of the job. I tell people that uh, my job is to be out of a job because uh, we end up selling the business to an acquirer and I become obsolete and move on to the next one. So currently I'm uh, the chief operating officer at a company called uh, Collie Power. It is a company that makes gluten-free cauliflower based pizza crusts and pizzas and some other meal items in the, in the frozen section of your local grocery store. Um, and I've had a number of roles in, on the operations side at the executive level um, over the years, and this is this is the most recent. So I'm excited about having just started and, and where this is going, and um, and that's that's where my Knox career has led me. Michael, I'll pitch it to you. Yeah, I took a, a decidedly different path than Darren. Um, I've spent uh, the last roughly 25 years in education. Um, got. Uh, I got started uh, again a little bit slow. I actually I went through a fifth year at Knox because I declared uh, education a little bit late. I uh, was actually a graduate assistant for the, the rest of my uh, fifth year at Knox for the basketball and, and track teams. Um, and then I, uh, I transitioned to education. Uh, it was a 10 year uh, education or teaching career. Uh, I was also a football, basketball and, and track coach during those those years. I uh, also got uh, picked up a couple of master's degrees in educational administration and curriculum. And uh, about for the last 15 years, uh, I've been a school administrator uh, in a couple of districts uh, as a district athletic director, dean of students, and uh, currently a, a, an assistant principal at Reed Custer High School. Um, and I've uh, been there for going on 11 years now as the assistant principal. Um, had, a, had a chance to um, really, I think, had a, a positive impact on and, and quite a few students and student athletes. I've actually sent a couple of my former students to Knox who, who both played football and basketball. So that was kind of a neat experience as well. And I've uh, just enjoyed um, watching kids, um, you know, kind of re reach their potential, um, both in the in the classroom and uh, on the sporting uh, fields. Awesome. Thank you both. Very exciting and very rewarding career paths, I will add, for both of you. So, Michael, you first this time. How did your Knox basketball experience help shape your career? That's a great question. Um, you know, I think in, in thinking about it earlier, I, I, it kind of helped me see things from uh, like a lot of different perspectives. Um, and, you know, I realized that not everybody, not everybody thinks like me, not everybody reacts the same way I do to certain situations. Um, you know, as a, as a point guard, and I'm sure Darren can probably uh, relate it a little bit as well, um, you have to see things a little bit more holistically. You have to see things as a whole, not just what, what is my role. 
Um, you have to put people in the right positions. You have to put them in, uh, you know, in the right spots to be successful because if they're successful, your organization is successful, your team is successful. Um, and it helped me some as a, as a teacher, but much more as an administrator um, that, that I've been able to, to kind of see things from that different perspective. Um, it also helped me to be, you know, open-minded. Um, it helped me to obviously understand the value of hard work uh, and communication uh, is essential, especially again, as a point guard, um, communicating, you know, what we need and, and when we need it and where we need it. Um, and I still use, I still use coach Hyman's line, um, you know, you know, uh, where he, where he, had some great conversations with him and he would always he'd always say you because you can talk to me about anything you can ask me anything as long as you're okay with hearing the word no and I I use that with with my students I use that with with even the, the teachers that I work with um that I'm I'm always open but I'm not always going to give in to what what they want so as long as they're okay with hearing the word no uh I, I'm, I'm definitely good with it. and I, I definitely credit coach Hyman for those little words of wisdom certainly certainly Darren, how about yourself? How did your Knox basketball experience help shape your career? Well, I kind of wish that I had answered the way Mike did. I, I, I like that answer. That was that was pretty solid. You know, for me, um, I'm I'm still really competitive, and I, I just do it from behind a desk now, which is which is I guess part of the course, uh, given given how long I've been away from the game. But uh, you know, I, I love. The, the position that I'm in, understanding and, and challenging the competition that is at us, you find success and you start seeing people coming after you. And, you know, same, same with, with basketball, um, uh, you know, working with a team that isn't just my skill set. You've got marketing, you've got sales, you've got finance, you've got all these different, different divisions working together to go after the competition. And, and it's not just a straight line. You have to adapt. What, 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 is, what is working? What's not working? What is the competition doing that's working? And you have to adapt to that. And, you know, I love that, that strategic component of, of business, I guess, and, and having people chase us. And that keeps us um, alert and it keeps us aware of what's going on and, and it keeps that competitive I, I'm going to call it competition, a little different type of competition, but keeps that competition or competitive spirit alive in me. And I, I, I love still having that, that edge. Certainly, certainly. Darren, I'll hit you with another one here and let you take the lead. Uh, shifting again, you know, to reminiscing on the Knox basketball days, if you had to pick just one memory during your playing career that stuck out with you the most, for better or worse, what would it be? Well, yeah, that's a tough one um, because there are plenty of both on court and, and off court memories. Uh, you know, I'll stick to the answer. For me, I think, I think probably what stuck with me the most is an off court memory, which is after, you know, three hours of, of pretty grueling practices and, and really beating up on each other, really physical practices, you know, vying for a starting position or vying for playing time. And after practice, being able to be, be with those people that you were just very physical with and, and you know, you get in arguments on court and waiting for each other, you know, af after, after you shower, after you change and you go to the lot and, and you head to the cafeteria together, you know, hoping that Pinky didn't close the calf on you because uh, it's late. And, and then sitting together and actually eating and then leaving together, going back to the dorms and studying or, you know, whatever it is we did in the evenings. And, and that, that camaraderie um, was, was real and it was, it, it was inherent in us and it was both on and off the court. And I love that aspect of, of the people that I played with. I was fortunate, Mike was fortunate as well with a number of, of people in our class that had, you know, that many years together. And, yeah, we didn't love each other all the time, but that was the best part of it because we were, we, we became brothers, you know, and, and I'm, and I'm still close with, with that, that group. And that memory is, is very different than some of the on-court memories that I had, but that's one that has stuck with me and, and probably has had the most meaning over, you know, over the years. Certainly, certainly. Michael, how about yourself? One Knox basketball memory that stuck out to you the most? I, you know what, it's, it's so funny that, 
you can definitely tell that we're related because mine are, my memories are much the same. Parents, I, I was pretty positive that he was going to talk about his half court shot to beat Rippon <laughs> last second, which was fantastic because I watched that ball come out of his hands, hit nothing but net, and then watch him turn to the crowd and just like he expected it to go in, like what I do this every day. Uh, that was I, I could I could have sworn that's what he was going to go with, but I'll, I'll, I'll digress. Um, <laughs> you know what I I, I thought Thanks, a couple Mike. of Thanks. I, I, I got a plug for you, Dave. Um, my, mine are very similar, crew. Um, the on court stuff was was great, but my my memory my my most powerful Knox memories of basketball are are those two and a half weeks during Christmas break where the campus was ours, where we had two day practices walking across from the quad in the snow, dead quiet, nothing else going on, but just three or four of the guys just walking across campus or, you know, over to the field house, getting ready for a two hour marathon basketball session. And then a half an hour in the pool of conditioning and then doing it all over, you know, going to the cafeteria, having the cafeteria to ourselves, watching, you know, having Henry sit at the table with us and, and talk basketball stories and, 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 and then going back to take a nap and to, to do it all over again. And to, again, that camaraderie and that, I think that, that devotion to what we were doing again, we're division three athletes. We're not getting paid to do this. We're giving up our time, energy, um, you know, our, our, you know, our, our blood, sweat and tears that are going into this. And those memories are the ones that, that I think about. I don't, I honestly don't think a whole lot about on court memories. Um, obviously Darren's half court shot, the, the, what three minutes that we got to play together against Co when he was a senior and I was a freshman, those are fantastic memories, but, the time that we got to spend, you know, again, walking over or spending those, those, those quiet times in the cafeteria or, or hanging out and, you know, playing, playing, having pitch tournaments or whatever we did, those are the memories that, that I, I think are the most important and the most lasting for me. And obviously, as, as Darren said, the guys that, that we played ball with are still the ones that, that we communicate with constantly. Um, you know, I'm not necessarily daily, but on a weekly basis, I'm communicating with those guys and they're my, the best friends that I've ever had. Friendships and teammates that have lasted long, long after your playing career. It's so awesome to hear that. So yeah. last one, uh, Michael, I'll start with you first this time. What would be your biggest piece of advice to today's Knox basketball players? Um, well, I, I talked a little bit about it with, um, you know, when I was in my induction or the, the induction speech for the Hall of Fame about, about giving your chance, yourself a chance to reflect on, on the times that you're having. Um, you know, this is the, this is kind of a magical, this is the sweet spot, you know, from, from like 19 to 21, 22, it's just, those are some absolutely fantastic times, but, uh, give yourself a chance to reflect, um, you know, appreciate the opportunities that you have, appreciate, um, you know, you know, obviously appreciate your coaches, appreciate the, the, the managers, the stat people, you know, tell, tell Scott Sunderland, thank you. Um, these people are giving up a, a lot to, to help you achieve you know, maybe a goal that you've had or to reach your potential. Um, so, you know, give yourself time to reflect, um, appreciate this time, appreciate the people around you. Uh, and I think finally is you know, what, whatever you do, just beat Monmouth. Um, you know, it doesn't matter if you're playing checkers, just, just go after them and don't, you know, just don't let them win. I love that. I love that. Darren, how about yourself? Last but not least, what is your biggest piece of advice to today's Knox basketball players? Well, I, I I have a couple. One is 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 during Knox. One is is post Knox. Um, a memory that I have with uh, that that was advice given to me um, was after a after a game, and we invariably had alumni would come down and listen to post game speeches, and even sometimes some halftime speeches. Typically post game, and I remember Dave Anderson, uh, class of '89, I believe who came down and was talking to us and and you know we all knew who he was uh, Kyle obviously was a was a classmate of mine and he said do not take this time for granted savor every minute of it because it goes by so fast and you could tell he he was he was struggling with getting that out because that time meant so much to him and and that happened to him but he went by so fast that it, it is tough to to reflect and, and to enjoy that moment because every day is a grind and, and it's tough to appreciate that it, and, until it's gone. And I loved hearing those words from him and, and 
probably have a better perspective of it now than I did at the time, but it's still great words to hear. Um, for for, for post Knox, um, you know, business the business world has changed very differently from what, from when I started. Um, and I had a class with Coach Nosher, and one of the questions he asked pretty early on in the class was, "Would you rather be liked or respected?" And I really struggled with that because I the vast majority of the group would would rather have been respected. Uh, I was not in that group. And I struggled with that for a long time, wondering why I picked that versus what everybody else picked. And what I learned is that it isn't necessarily an either or. You, you can have both. And it doesn't come easily and it doesn't, it isn't just given to you. You have to, you have to earn that. But you know, as you as as you get into the business world, there are a lot of smart people out there, a lot of highly educated people out there. It doesn't matter. It does not matter. Um, don't expect anything. You know, check your ego at the door. Um, you know, put your head down and do the work. Uh, there's a there's a relatively new concept called EQ, which is emotional intelligence. You know, how you talk to people, what you say. You can be honest with people without being a jerk. Um, you can be aggressive or assertive without being too aggressive. There are there are ways that the business world works today that is is changing because of the younger generations that are coming in and really having major influence on on how the business world works, which I think is amazing. And it's and it's happened quickly. So you're going to be a part of that. And you can be liked and respected, um, maybe more liked than respected, or maybe more respected than liked, but it, it isn't necessarily an either or. And you, you are part of the future. And I know that sounds a little bit cliche, but I've seen it actually happen where these young, the younger generations coming in are actually changing how business works. And you're going to be a part of that. So um, I, I, I would just say, take that seriously, do the work and, and you're going to be successful. There's, there's no reason. I mean, look at Mike and I come from a very, very small town, went to a, a small school, but yet we, we both have pretty successful careers and paths that we've taken that we wanted to take. And, um, and why not us? So that would be that would be my on and off court advice to the to the Knox athletic teams. Awesome. Thank thank you both. No, that is tremendous insight, and I appreciate you sharing that. And I would agree, Darren, that uh, you know you both you and Michael have had extremely successful careers. Uh, so. You know, Darren, Michael, it was both wonderful to have you on with us during halftime. We're so fortunate that you were able to log on and make this possible. Again, thank you both. And Nate, I'll turn it back over to you uh, to take us back to the action in Memorial Gym. So thank you. Uh